Hey everybody, I'm Tim Brzezinski. In this 3D modeling with augmented reality part three, we're going to take yesterday's construction and we're going to build on it to make an even more crazier composite solid here. I'm excited to do this, so let's get started. I'm going to screen share. As I'm doing so, if you go to the uh, description of the YouTube video uh, right over there, it'll it'll have a link to a GeoGebra resource uh, which looks just like this here. This is the live stream right here. But basically, our goal is to build this. And I have my phone on the right side here. I'll just to show you this in real life. Uh, this is what we want to make right here. Okay. So in essence, uh, we have a uh, we have two solids at work here. We have a rectangular prism, uh, nine uh, and eight tenths, nineteen and sixty five hundredths, and the depth here is four and sixty five hundredths, as you can see. And over here, now this triangular prism. Uh, still shares that common edge of 19 and 65 hundredths, as you can see right there, right? And 9 and 8 tenths right there. But what we're going to do is instead of doing this, we're going to flip it so the, the face that's like the hypotenuse, if you will, is going to be on top of that top edge right there and model it like this, okay? Now, this is definitely not, this is definitely not a beginning construction for students, but you know, for the uh, students in the class that get bored after one or two, it's like, listen, you know what? While the other students are working with plotting points in 3D, have them work on this. Okay, totally can do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our construction from yesterday and build on it. So what I need to do is go back and find it. So if you excuse me, I should have had that ready before. I'll just go to my profile here. And it was 3D modeling with AR part two. Uh, here it is. Okay, so let me take that. All right, and uh, right here. So that's the finished product that I had right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. Uh, I'm going to take this resource from yesterday, this finished product, and I'm going to open it in the, in the app. So I'm signed in the GeoGebra. I go here to the Snowman, upper right corner, open an app. And what that does is it's going to open it in the 3D calculator, so I can literally work in it right here, as you can see uh, right here. OK, so uh, a couple things uh, before we uh, get started here, just to um, uh, get us uh, get our feet wet a little better um, so I can get rid of this right here since I opened it already. All right. So what we're going to do here again, we want to take this. Uh, I'm, obviously, I'm going to click on this box, this prism here. I'm going to delete it because I don't need that. Right. Remember, we made that yesterday, but I do need this prism. Right. In fact, um, if I actually start showing points, remember A, B, C, and D were the base there, and E, F, G, and H are the uh, are the vertices there. Obviously, I'm going to need to work off point E because, again, as you can see here, right? Again, this uh, if I can angle this appropriately here, this uh, prism right here. Again, that block, what you see there, it literally is this block right here. But now I need to put this on top, right? So I need somehow to find a point that's what nine and eight nine point eight centimeters away from E somewhere up here and oh my gosh well how are we gonna do this here? Well, let's uh, let's actually um, do this first to make our lives easier. Let's actually go back here and whenever I actually do this, okay, I like to uh, organize everything by going to settings. That's that to me that's key. Settings. All right, let's go to um, the settings gear, uh, the algebra view, like the cubic little thing. All right, and I'm going to sort this by construction order because I want to see at this point what I'm doing in order now. All right, uh, I'm also going to take the time to sign in. I guess I was. Let me just go to Google here. All right, there we go. Now, um, so with this now, if we look at what we what we just had, right? We need to actually take a look at this one more time. All right, let me bring this over here and we'll slide this over. All right, let's look at it one more time, a little up close, right? Again, this is the new piece right here. Nine and eight tenths, uh, one leg is 19 and 6,500. So obviously I got to find the hypotenuse. That's the first step. So let's do that. You know, I'm thinking, all right, so we could do nine and eight tenths squared. Squared, just the shift six there for the squared, plus what, nineteen and sixty-five hundred squared. 
and that gives me uh, 482 and 1600. So I could type in the keyboard and type in square root F, which I'm happy to do here. Obviously, there's the, there's a positive root and a negative root, but the negative can't work because distance is never negative. So the square root of F, right, gives us what? 21 and 96 hundredths. So this edge right here, well, if I can hold it uh, down far enough, that hypotenuse is 21 and 96 hundredths units long. So let's think about this. Where does this have to, to go? I mean, I could show the coordinates of point E if I want to, right? Go back up here for okay, right click and go to settings and uh, show the name show the label as the value the name and value right that was zero zero nineteen point six five right and so now if we think about it where does that where is this point right here going to be right that point right here is going to be what 21 what was that hypotenuse again 21 and 96 hundredths away uh to the right of e so I could go ahead and plot that right now. All right, so let's see. So I'll go here. Whoop. I'll type in, oh, parentheses, uh, 21. Or I could just type in J, right, because that's what it was, J, or use. let's just use the number, 21 and 96 hundredths, zero. Uh, and then up 19 and 65 hundredths right there. See, that's the other one. That's the other component right there. And what were, what were the coordinates of H? If I click on H, I could show the name and value. H was that. Now I could translate I by a vector. I can make a vector here and translate that like we did last time, but just to save time, let's just plot the points. Probably gonna be quicker and easier. All right, so that will be what? Um, what was that, 21, X is 21.96. Y is gonna be four and 65 hundredths, right? And then now the, um, Z is still going to be 19.65, and there it is, okay? And so I could actually make that face right now by going to the polygon tool, go to more, and let's go to polygon, right there under lines and polygons, and we'll make polygon E, I, J, H, and close it by going back to E again. All right, so now, Here's the challenge. Here's the, that's the easy part. But what's the what seems difficult now is trying to get that point, right? That's uh show you again. Right, let's get that camera going here. We want this up here now. So we have that bottom rectangle, we have that lateral face right there. Okay, shouldn't we I don't think we should be using the words bottom and top when it comes to prisms because obviously you, you get what I'm saying. So here we from this point E, I think that's E right here, we need a we need a, a distance of 9.8 centimeters away. And over from this point, what did it call it? I, right? This point I, we need to find, it needs to be uh, 19, this point up here needs to be 19 and 65 hundredths units away from that. Now, geometry teachers, if you were doing this in 2D, how would you have, how would you be having your kids do this construction? Now, you're probably saying to me, well, you'd get a compass and a straight edge and you just set the distance, you know, You'd lock the distance between tip of pencil to 9.8 and then make a circle, right? So don't we really want to make a circle with, uh, you know, this point here, going through this point here, kind of going like uh, sort of vertical, like like that in a way? Again, working in 3D gets really weird sometimes, but it's actually not that bad. But what we're going to do, see, the thing is, it, it gets in, in 3 in 2D, it's simple. There's only, a, a, there's only one plane going to contain that circle. A circle has to be, by nature, coplanar, right? But when we... When we use the circle with center through point two and 3D, we have to specify another dimension, an another facet. One of two things, either an axis that's perpendicular uh, to the circle, the plane containing the circle, or that plane containing the circle itself. Let me show you what I mean. So in order to keep, see the thing is, I want to actually find a point that's 9.8 away from here and 19.65 away from here, but by using circles. So to do that, I'm going to actually use this tool here, plane through three points. Now watch this, okay? I'm going to make a plane through A, E, and I. Now that literally is the plane Y equals zero, for those of you like algebraically minded, right? It's kind of C right there. You can see it's going through that. But now watch what happens, okay? I can do one of two things. I could use the circle tool here. The circle with axis through, and it tells you what to do. Select axis, then point, uh, actually, not that. No, I'm sorry. I'm actually going to just type it in. 
easier for me to do that. All right, I want to make a circle now. See, there's a couple circle options here. Uh, point, point direction. Well, or point radius direction. I'm going to use one of these bottom, uh, bottom two right here. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to say the circle point radius direction. So that that's got a has a center of E, right? And it's going to go through F, but it has to go through plane P. See? Now that circle is radius 9.8. Okay, it's pretty neat. And so at the same time now, let's actually focus on constructing from. Let me, uh, I'm going to go shift and go down a little bit so we can see that better. All right. Now over here from point I, let's do the same thing. I need, sir, I need a circle um, starting at I and going through F, but also, I'm sorry, not, not, not F. It's got to be, um, it's got to be a radius 19. What was that distance up there? Uh, 19.65, right? So 19, so I could type in the radius if, if I want, right? And then basically um, that same plane P right there. Okay. Here we used uh, here we used a circle with center passes through a point, and here's a plane that contains those two points, or even a plane that's parallel will work as well. Okay. In this command, what I did is I actually told the center, I, I told GeoGebra, give me the center of the circle. Here's the radius of the circle, the plane below top. All right. There's other ways to do it, but I'm just going to keep it at one that way for right now. All right. And you'll notice here, check it out. Isn't that really the point that I need where those two circles cross? Go to the tools, and there's the intersect tool right there. Take it, and now you can actually just see, click right there, and you got that uh, third vertex. Okay, so let's check. So let's actually go back to the algebra view. We'll, we'll, we'll hide the circles. Right? We'll hide the plane, uh, but keep that point there, right? And now we can actually. Uh, now we can actually, instead of repeating all that uh, process, let's just go to the vector tool right here under lines and polygons. Okay. And let's make vector E H and see how we're just now going to translate L by that vector. If we translate that point L there, we can literally make, find that other vertex that we need. All right. So uh, let's do that. So under transform, let's go to translate by vector right here. We'll touch L. We'll touch the vector. And there's L prime. Touch the move arrow to turn the tool off, and we could see there, right? That's what we're going to be working with here. And so now the hard part's over. Now let's just make the uh, we can use the prism tool. We we could do the polygon tool repeatedly, but let's go at it with uh, a um, a prism here. Let's see if that works. If it doesn't, it should I'll uh, just do it the other way. So um, let's actually uh, we have, first we have to make a, a polygon base. Right, the base of a triangular prism is a triangle, of course. So we'll do that here. E, L, I, and then touch again. So what I'm going to do is I want to make a prism, right, where that triangle is the base there, and that vector is is the length, the magnitude of that vector is the the height, if you will. So um, extrude the prism right here under solids. Will let me do that. So I click on the the polygon, and uh, for an altitude. Oh, I'll just say, uh, what was it, 4.65, I think. There we go. All right. Or I could have said distance E, comma J, whatever. But there it is, people. That is our uh, solid right there. And that looks like what we saw before. But now it's time to do cleanup really quickly, as I showed you before. Um, let's actually uh, go back to settings. Settings. Uh, where the cubic is right there. I like to sort by uh, object types so I can clean up all object types simultaneously. So for the points, what I'm going to do for the points is I'm just going to simply hide them. If I touch the word point, right, and then right click and then settings, just uncheck show object. All the points go. And for the, uh, the quadrilaterals, I'll click on those. I'll basically right click settings and what for, for uh, style. I like to show the hidden line styles unchanged, but for the line thickness, that's good. Two, three, something like that. All right. And then for the, the triangle now, let's actually, uh, we could actually make that the same color, whatever color that was. Settings, 
color again that's the third one in so i could click on that triangle make it the third one in see what i'm saying uh, but for the segments now in the triangles uh, click on the word segment and for style let's do on change well you know same thing three and then for triangle i think these two wherever it was down here triangle uh unchanged see how it cleans those lines up right there like so and we can hide the vector as well the vector is somewhere down here under v it's alphabetized uh, alphabetically now and there you go so it really looks like that hopefully let's work now we're going to use augmented reality to open it on our device to see how well it actually looks like that so again i'm look, looking looking pretty hopeful here right so now let's put it to the test and uh, and check it out so again to save this all I need to do is make sure you're signed in. We'll go here to uh, we'll go here to file, save, and I'm gonna go to three three block AR demo or something like that. Again, make it public um, for right now. Saving, saving. It says save successfully, and where that resource is now found, you see the characters right here. But I like to just go open it to make sure it's on my profile. It's there. Go back to GeoGebra home profile. See, that's it right there. Click on it, OK? And notice the string of characters right here. The last few digits in that URL, that is uh, what you could type in in your phone to get it like the one to show up. But I'll just go to a quick Google Doc here, basically, blank. And um, let's just pay. Paste it here, and I'll make it big. So if you open this up, you can so as well, right along with me. There we go. So that's the code we're going to type in to GeoGebra uh, 3D we open on our phone. I'm going to use my uh, iPhone today. All right. A little smaller, but whatever. So 3D calculator right there. Let's open it. Go up here to the bars right there. Go to search, and let's type it in. It's case sensitive, so the first W has got to be small. W W U N. Oh, I messed up. W W U N uh, N H V three. I could also try typing the title. It might show up first. It might not, but I don't feel like searching through. I just want it to show right away, like you see right here. Okay, W W U N H V three opens it right there for this particular case. And again, I'm going to use my fingers here to kind of bring it in the view. That's what we just made in the last five minutes. And now, let's. Uh, this is the icing on the cake, baby, right here. We're going to put this in augmented reality to see how well it fits our uh, our model here. So touch the AR button. If you will, put it on the floor there. Wait for the square. There it is. And now let's put it to the test. And check it out. Well, you could show that down here. I'll get more room in there, right? And let's see. Love it. And we could even take a nice little screenshot. There we go, right? You can do all sorts of things. Kids can make their own screencasts, doing whatever. But that is the power of GeoGebra 3D with augmented reality. We could even turn it around for a second. We can go inside it, do whatever. But you see, it's uh, it's an awesome app. Um, but again, you could start simple. But then for this could be an activity through which you can differentiate for your overachievers. The kids that have a hard time with like doing something basic, like I said before, like this, you know, why by just simply doing something like this, that makes it a whole that's just as a brand new ball game right there. All right. Let's check this out this way. The other orientation should still work pretty pretty well, right? But yeah, there's that on right away. Again, I don't want to waste your time here, but again, this is just uh all that work. We uh, need to see this, right? So let's see. There we go. Nice. So yeah, um, so that's how uh, we could do something that uh, looks like that. So uh, go back to the Hangout here, I'll stop sharing. So a lot, a lot more ideas gonna be coming in this series with GeoGebra 3D and augmented reality within the classroom. Uh, the next screencast, we're gonna have a circle, uh, tangent to a rectangular prism, we'll having the same, going through a plane containing the same base. I'm um, not going to have time later this week, but we'll do that next Tuesday. Going to take a few days off from this. We're going to go back to the series Tuesday. This is a, a work in progress. Going to have a bunch of things. I know we've been sticking to a lot of geometry now, but we'll, we're also going to dig into algebra, pre-calc, uh, algebra 2, things like that. So um, thank you for joining me. If you love what you see, feel free to subscribe. A lot more how-tos uh, going to be coming up. So uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day.